God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. We'll be continuing our study today in the 19th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. We read the verse 12 in our last session, so today we'll be starting our study at verse 13 in the 19th chapter. Before we start our study, let me thank you again for logging on to be with us. We want you to know that I am excited about what God is doing in this ministry and through this ministry. Uh, we have listeners uh, from uh, different parts of our world, and I want you to know I am grateful to you for listening. And I'm grateful for God for opening that opening that door for you to listen and to for me to expound. Uh, I, those of you that uh, would like to get in touch with me or uh, contact me, you can contact me through my website. Uh, when you go to my website, go to where it says about the author. Click on the the icon where it says about the author. That will bring up the page that tells you a little bit about me and the type of writer that I am. Uh, and it also has a section down there if you would like to contact the author you can put your information in there write me a note of encouragement whatever you may uh, want to say to me or question that you may have for me uh, and it will come up to uh, two or three of my different uh, email addresses for my business and my personal issues, whatever the case may be uh, it will uh, it will come up in all of those places I will be able to read your email and can respond to you I want you to know I would be so so grateful if you take the time just to, to uh, write me a note and say I am listening to you and I thank you for uh, the words that you say any, type, any word you have to say or even if you have constructive criticism I would love to hear that from you I want you to know I love you and my key focus is to make the word of God plain for you I'm giving you my daily devotion hoping that it will catch on in your life and you log on just 15 minutes per day 5 days a week and receive from the Lord. Shall we go into our study today? Uh, we concluded uh, in verse 12 in our last session where Jesus said, For uh, there are some eunuchs who were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, uh, and there are some eunuchs who gave, uh, who made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that uh, is able to receive it, uh, let him receive it. Uh, we talked about that in detail on our last subject. Uh, uh, so Jesus is uh, letting us know uh, uh, that you know, uh, what, regardless of how you look at it, uh, 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 sex is a part of our world. Uh, we see it on TV. Uh, uh, many of the uh, uh, even even the commercial ads that we watch to use sex appeal to get uh, uh, their message across to us or at least to get our attention so that they can get the message across to us uh, by using some subliminal means and, and different different types of methods. So uh, it has to be dealt with and Jesus took time to talk about uh, these things and he talked about divorce uh, 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 in our last setting. Uh, uh, we went into that in, in some detail. I only take 15 minutes to do each broadcast. Uh, uh, and uh, because I don't want to bore you, I want you to stay with me the full time so you can get the fullness of God's word. So I limit it to 15 minutes uh, in a time spot. I could buy more time and, and longigate each message, but I want to keep your interest as much as I can. So I, I'm trying to stay in the guidelines of 15 minutes uh, per session. So Jesus talked about it in detail, and I did my best to elaborate uh, on in our last session. You can go to our archive section uh, from my website and, and see all of them or at least go to the last session and and, and uh, listen to it uh, and, and read the Bible out along as I expound and see if you can't get something out of what I said. Here we go into the 13th verse uh, of the 19th chapter where uh, the Bible reads, uh, uh, then were there brought unto him little children after he got through uh, teaching on, uh, uh, on such a great subject uh, as divorce uh, and men's sex life and things of that nature. Uh, they brought to him uh, little children that, that should be put in his hand, and he put his hand on them and prayed. Uh and prayed, uh, and the disciples rebuked him. They rebuked Jesus for laying hands on the children and praying for the children. Uh, in verse 14, but Jesus said, uh, Suffer it or permit little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Uh, well, Jesus had uh, compassion, and he loved the, the, the little children and the young people, and, and I, I have you to know we should do the same thing. Uh, our young people are important, and, and how we treat 
treat them and how we show them love uh, has a great effect as they grow uh, through adolescence on, on into adulthood and through their lives. So we should have compassion and we should love children uh, as Jesus did. We should not always want to rebuke them or shoo them away, uh, uh, make them go out in the backyard and play. Sometimes they want to be around where things are happening. They want to hear the word of God too sometimes. Uh, and Jesus took the little children and he blessed them. Uh, he, he told his disciples who tried to rebuke him and, uh, and uh, get him away from the children. Jesus rebuked them uh, in return and said, permit little children to come unto me and forbid them not uh, uh, to, uh, to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Uh, now we're going to the 16th verse of uh, the same chapter, chapter 19. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I, they, that I may have eternal life? And we're going to deal with this in depth in some of our future settings. Uh, many of us have tried to purchase uh, 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 our salvation, try to work our way to heaven. Uh, but Jesus is going to teach us something here. Uh, and uh, it may be a little bit harder for you to fathom than you might think. But I want you to stay with me through this setting. As we go into verse 13, he said unto them, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. These are the words of Jesus. So important to keep the commandments of our Lord uh, or of God. Verse uh, 18, and he said unto him, which, uh, uh, he said unto him, which, <coughs> Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, Jesus just gave him uh, some of the commandments, and the young man said unto him, All these have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Uh, the man wanted to know more. I, I've already done that all of my life. Uh, I've kept the commandments of God and I've honored my uh, father and my mother. What do I like yet? Uh, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect. Now there, there's, a, there's a saying there. Uh, 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 if thou wilt be perfect. My Lord, uh, most of us haven't reached perfection yet. Uh, most of us are trying to get to perfection and have not got there. If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell what thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. <coughs> Please excuse me. Come and follow me. Uh, well, uh, but when the young man heard that saying, uh, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Uh, that's the one thing he could not master. Uh, 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 there's nothing wrong with having riches. I've said that more than one time in our studies. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. Uh, but uh, 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 this sometime, uh, if God required your riches, uh, if he uh, gave you this word, uh, this ram of word for you and you only, uh, to go and sell what you have and give to the poor. Would you be able to do that just at the word of God? Uh, just at the word of our Lord? Uh, well, the man could not take that saying. That was a little bit much for him. Uh, when the young man heard it, uh, uh, that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great percent of uh, great possessions. Uh, he, had, he was a very wealthy young man. Uh, in verse 23, uh, then uh, said Jesus unto his disciples, uh, Verily I say unto you, ver Verily I say unto you, That a rich man shall with difficulty, A rich man shall with difficulty, Enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, in so many words, It will be hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh, why? Because, uh, you know, that, 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 that may be a hard saying, But the reason is so difficult, That uh, it's so easy for us to depend on the money that we have. Uh, those with good jobs, it's easy for for us to, to depend on that good job than it is to depend on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, and if he would require of you, uh, if he would give you a ram of word and said, give all that you have, uh, would you be able to do it? Uh, that's one thing that separates us many times from really pleasing God. Uh, we're not willing to give up all. Uh, we might give up some, but we won't give up all. Uh, well, let's read verse 24. <coughs> Please excuse me. 
And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Well, that's a hard saying. And some tried to fix it up and call the eye of a needle a, a, a gate and all of that. It may have been a, a, a term like that. But let me tell you, I believe that he was talking about the eye of a needle. The, the, the difficulty it is to get into heaven being very wealthy. Well, let me read on. And when his disciples heard uh, it, they were uh, extremely amazed, uh, saying, Who then uh, can be saved? Uh, if it's that hard for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven, who then can be saved? Uh, but Jesus beheld them and said unto him, unto them, uh, With men all, uh, with, with, with men, this is impossible. Uh, this is impossible. Uh, well, uh, uh, that's with men. Uh, but you have to finish that verse. But with God, uh, all things are possible. Uh, there's nothing impossible with God. Uh, God can get a rich man into heaven uh, just like he can get a poor man into heaven. Uh, it's all about mindset. Uh, so God is able to touch the heart of a wealthy man. Uh, and that wealthy man can turn around and be an asset to the kingdom of God. Uh, God has a way of dealing with us. You have to start, I have to understand with men, many things are impossible. When God gets in the picture, when you bring God into the equation, it makes the difference. It can make the difference between one being saved and one being lost. The Spirit of God can take a rich man and humble his heart and make him as humble as that poor man. Well, I'll tell you, I've seen sometimes folks that didn't have a dime was so haughty in spirit and high-minded. And I've seen with my eyes wealthy folks that had an humble nature about them. So God can do anything. With God, all things are possible. With men, it may be impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Let's conclude this passage of Scripture. Then uh, answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall... <coughs> Excuse me. What shall we have uh, therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, uh, that ye who uh, have followed me uh, in the regeneration, uh, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, uh, ye also shall sit uh, upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, so Jesus is saying, you may have given up uh, all. Oh, you may have given up many things. Uh, but if you follow me, uh, you're going to be blessed. Uh, I don't care what you have to give up. Uh, God has something greater in store for you. Well, in verse 29, uh, And everyone that has forsaken houses, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my sake, Name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and uh, shall inherit uh, everlasting life. And that's the most and main thing that we're after. Uh, everlasting life. Uh, living in, 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 in eternally in glory. Uh, eternally in heaven. Uh, eternally with our Lord. Uh, uh, if we forsake all, uh, well, let me let you know, we will have eternal happiness. Uh, we will be with our Lord. Uh, everlasting. Uh, we shall inherit eternal uh, and everlasting life. Uh, verse 30. But many, uh, uh, but many that are first shall be last, uh, and the last shall be first. Uh, well, let me tell you, those who strive to be first, uh, sometime will be last. Uh, well, what well, some though, sometimes those that are wealthy here, uh, when we get over there, they will not be first. Uh, some won't make it there uh, because of their wealth uh, and because of the things that they have. Uh, my time is rapidly running to an end for this session, uh, but I encourage you to continue logging on. Uh, your knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will grow. Your knowledge of the Bible will become the ultimate. And I want you to know I love you, my friends, with the love of the Lord. If you need to contact me, you can contact me, 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, San Antonio, Texas. You can also reach me through my website, www.poemsaboutchester.com. Remember, I love you, my friends, with the love of the Lord. God bless you.